Hello hackers! Welcome to another module of Pwn College. Today we're going to be talking about memory errors. Uh, specifically, this video is an introduction into uh, the first time in the course where we'll truly be subverting a program. In the past, uh, in previous modules, we've reverse engineered software um, to try to understand it better. We've um, escaped from jails. We've abused programs in terms of their kind of high level uh, design um, by you know using a program that wasn't intended to leak out sensitive data on the file system, to read out sensitive data of the file system, stuff like this. But here we're truly gonna be messing with the guts of software to make it do something it wasn't intended to do. Um, we're gonna cover memory corruption and other um, types of memory errors. And then of course, throughout the course, we'll dig deeper into advanced scenarios. Uh, let's take a step back and uh, look at the beginning. Of course, this isn't quite the beginning, but sometime a long time ago, um, computers were programmed through the direct input of machine code, whether that was directly on a punch card by setting bits in memory, the, the punch card would be read in to memory, or if it was writing um, assembly code like you did in shell coding to um, make the program do what you, um, specifically exactly what you wanted to do. But of course, this is a tedious error prone process, right? Um, software is not written in assembly for the most part nowadays. Um, and this uh, trend away from assembly started in the 50s um, when Admiral Grace Hopper, she wasn't an admiral back then, um, proposed one of the first compilers that, that uh, ended up moving on to become uh, COBOL, a very, uh, famous programming language uh, when I was young. It was very relevant around the um, turn of the century uh, because a lot of financial software was written in it. And so it was super important around Y2K. But um, it, it became popular in certain segments such as the financial uh, sector, but it had problems. Um, early compilers, they were very, um, they created very inefficient code. You would write your program and, and uh, the output wouldn't, run very quickly and this was further compounded by another problem that early computers were slow that's not um a problem now and you see plenty of very inefficient code your um the python uh, interpreter for example is horrifically slow but is still um extremely popular but back then this was a serious issue because computers were not fast enough to compensate for slow code um and uh, so 20 years later um Dennis Ritchie, also a co-founder of Unix, the uh, kind of um, ancestor operating system of Linux, which you're all using in this course, of course, uh, created C to write utilities for Unix after they had invented Unix with his colleagues. Um, C was specifically designed to provide power and uh, control to the programmer while maintaining portability and um, the ability to uh, convey complex con uh, ideas and, and implement complex algorithms in source code uh, without having to fine tune register allocation and so forth. Um, C maps very closely to assembly. C is basically in some sense assembly with um, the register allocation done for you across functions and so forth. Um, and, and if you notice while you were reverse engineering, if you click the decompile function in your or decompile button in your um, reverse engineering tool, or you went to the high level um, intermediate representation, which is basically decompilation in binary ninja, um, you would see C because it's easiest to map assembly to C uh, and vice versa. So C was created to enable the creation of efficient, fast binary code, but still allow people to, to you know, interact with something that looks like source code instead of insanity. Um, C is very powerful in the sense, but with uh, great power, of course, comes great responsibility. Um, C has significant security implications. Um, the power that it gives developers allows developers to mess things up really, really badly. And the problem is most developers are not security experts and they will make mistakes they don't even know about. 
security experts, of course, still make mistakes, but they even know about them. So, so C code is very dangerous to write, but there's a ton of it. In the 70s, when it was um, developed, it was the uh, really the best tool for the job if you wanted to write fast, efficient code. Um, operating systems tend to be written in C. Unix was written in C, or rewritten in C after C was developed. Uh, Linux was written in C. Uh, the Berkeley system distribution, which spawned other operating systems, including uh, the modern uh, Macintosh uh, family of operating systems, uh, was is written in C. Um, so C kind of suddenly was everywhere. In the 80s, um, people focused more on features. They, they created C++. They brought object-oriented um, programming concepts to C um, with C++. And, and, uh, but they didn't fix anything about the underlying danger, right? In the 90s, um, the uh, idea of modern uh, VM-based languages, virtual, virtual machine-based languages like Java and so forth came about, but it was too late. Um, mainstream compiled languages were everywhere at that point. Linux was born. Uh, the Berkeley system distribution was born. Windows was born. Windows is written in uh, C++. Um, all fast compiled memory unsafe languages throughout the 2000s compiled uh, memory unsafe languages persisted. And even throughout the 2010s, people finally started thinking about, okay, how are we going to replace all the C code with, with something that is still fast um, but it's safe, uh, but it's really just the beginning of, of this effort. Um, the problem is, of course, an insane amount of software is written in C. C is still, depending on your metrics, the most popular programming language. If you go to that TO uh, index that's linked on the slides, C is still number one. It's 2020, 50 years almost after the invention of C, and it is still number one after regaining its spot from Java, which which was number one for over a decade. Um, C++ is number four, but it's the fastest growing language out there, faster than Python. Um, it and, and it is still a compiled language with memory safety issues uh, in, in many use cases. Um, as recently as 2017, C was still the most, um, uh, uh, the, the fastest growing language. Why is all of this happening? Well, this is all happening because um, um, sorry, I blanked for a second. This is all happening because as computers get more powerful and seemingly are able to run higher level languages, right? So you might say, well, why can't we just write our operating systems in Python and be done with it? Um, it, things aren't quite that simple. Um, we have an explosion of embedded devices, your um, security cameras, your doorbells, your refrigerators are computers. And these computers are small and not very fast. And they need code that runs as fast as possible. So there's this huge proliferation of C onto all of these embedded devices. Um, and it's basically fundamentally just here to stay for the foreseeable future. So we have to deal with um, problems in C. So what are these problems? These problems are uh, multifold, uh, but they basically stem from the fact that C doesn't hold your hand. And C allows you to make mistakes. And we'll go into the problems themselves into the, uh, at a high level in the next video. Um, but I'll point out that problems with C have been known a very, very long time ago. Actually, problems with these sort of uh, low-level um, compu uh, languages, computer languages, have been known since the late 60s. Uh, Robert Graham, in a um, paper about the concept, essentially, of, of memory protection in computing in uh, 1968, said, hey, what would happen if a program allows someone to override memory they're not supposed to, that this might be very bad, right? And C allows exactly that and more. Uh, in the next video, we'll go into at a high level what it is that C allows. Stay with us.